Hello, and welcome to my series on the CT of Pediatric Emergencies. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of Virtual Radiologic, or VRAD. I began my career with an internal medicine residency, followed by three years of work as an emergency room physician. I then returned to training for a radiology residency and a fellowship in body and MSK MRI. In my over 20 years in radiology, I have spent two years in private practice, two years in academics, and 17 years now as a teleradiologist for Virtual Radiologic. I've been their chief medical officer for eight years, and I'm licensed to practice in all 50 states. I have divided our curriculum into general systems and have created three sessions of eight cases each. Session three, pediatric genitourinary emergencies. We begin this session with a case of lipoid congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Note the marked enlargement of both adrenal glands and the diffuse hypodensity consistent with fatty infiltration. These patients can have varying degrees of salt wasting depending on which exact enzyme in the creation of mineralocorticoid hormones is deficient. This patient did have significant salt wasting and persistent hypovolemia as evidenced by the diminutive size of his aorta. Here on the video, note the enlargement and hypodensity on that diminutive aorta throughout its length. You can see this even better on the coronals, where you see those enlarged and fatty infiltrated adrenal glands. And again, that markedly tapered aorta, which is diminutive even for this small patient. There are the adrenals and that small abdominal vasculature. So that is a case of lipoid congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Our next case is a relatively straightforward case of cystitis and pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis can be relatively subtle on scans, however, and I want to be sure everyone is capable of recognizing it. Here it is, that region of decreased cortical and medullary uh, cortical Our next case is a relatively straightforward case of cystitis and pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis can be relatively subtle on scans, so I wanted to be sure that we all reviewed a case of it. Here you can see the cortical and medullary hypodensity, the slight striated appearance, a nice subtle finding that does denote pyelonephritis. There is extensive bladder wall thickening, suggesting this is an ascending infection related to an original cystitis, commonly the scenario. So here is that hypodensity in the right kidney, right there. And then we'll go down to the bladder and note that pronounced wall thickening consistent with cystitis. In a male patient, of course, this should suggest the presence of an underlying anatomic abnormality and usually will initiate further workup with BCUG. Here it is on the coronal, the thick-walled bladder. And here, both inferiorly and superiorly, those regions of striated hypodensity in the right kidney. There is the cystitis and here. Those striated hypodensities, pretty subtle, but consistent with multifocal pyelonephritis.
on our next case is infectious mononucleosis. The most common finding is this splenic enlargement, pretty much the hallmark of the disease. Many people don't appreciate the extent to which infectious mononucleosis can cause nephritis and hepatitis. And we have the nephritis here, a very nice demonstration of viral involvement of both kidneys, causing very much uh, the same appearance as pyelonephritis might. In addition, an additional diagnostic clue here is this paravertebral abscess in the soft tissues. Remember that there is reduced immune surveillance and function in these patients. It is a white cell infection that does put them at risk for secondary infections, as in this case. So appreciate that splenomegaly. There is the nephritis and a soft tissue abscess in the paravertebral tissues there. There again, splenomegaly, nephritis, and a soft tissue abscess. So that can be put all together, and the suspicion of infectious mononucleosis raised, I think, solely on the imaging findings. Our next case. Well, it's not really a genital urinary case. However, this is such a severe case of myelitis meningitis uh, that I was compelled to show it. It does have a similarity to our prior case in that there are paravertebral abscesses, in this case, extension of the spinal infection. So the most important finding here is that meningeal enhancement there uh, in the inferior aspect of the spinal canal surrounding the cauda equina nerve roots. There are obviously, of course, additional psoas and paravertebral fluid collections consistent with extension of this infection and abscess formation. There, all the way down to the fecal sac, there is enhancement, and of course in the paravertebral tissues as well, extending down into the pelvis. You can see that enhancement throughout the meninges, all throughout the distal thoracic spine there. So that is an infectious myelitis meningitis with extension into the paravertebral soft tissues. Our next case is one of an ectopic ureteral insertion. Got this an instructive case in that it shows just how dramatic the dilation of an obstructed ureter can become. And this is a an obstructed kidney with marked cortical thinning, suggesting it has gone on for a very long time. And the dilated ureter is all throughout the abdomen, very tortuous and markedly expanded. The ectopic insertion is often difficult to find, but we actually see it here posteriorly, coming down in the region of the prostatic urethra. So there is that chronically obstructed kidney with very little functioning cortex remaining. And then all throughout the abdomen, the tortuous course of that dilated ureter, and there it's ectopic insertion. We have this on a coronal as well. It really helps you appreciate the thinning of the cortex and the dilation of that ureter. And here is its ectopic insertion at the posterior aspect of the bladder. So that is an ectopic ureteral insertion causing chronic obstruction and dramatic hydroureter and hydronephrosis. Our next case is another chronic obstruction, this time related to posterior urethral valves. So we have marked hydronephrosis and some cortical thinning as well pronounced dilation of both ureters throughout the abdomen and marked bladder distension. That bladder distension uh, obviously gives you a clue to the fact that there is outlet obstruction here. The critical image 
is this next one where you can see the proximal urethra is dilated. Uh, this is just upstream of the posterior urethral valves, which are causing the dynamic obstruction on urination in this patient. And we see again the hydronephrosis, the pronounced hydroureter, and the marked bladder distension. But right there is the critical finding that proximal prostatic urethral dilation denoting the presence of posterior urethral valves. So again, the ureters, marked bladder distension, but right here, the critical finding. So that is a case of posterior urethral valves causing chronic outlet obstruction. Our next case is a hematometrial colpos presenting acutely. You can see there is pronounced distension of the uterus with thinning of the myometrium and expansion of the endometrial cavity. On the next cut down, you can see the vagina is similarly distended with retained menstrual products. Here on the cine is the distended uterus and vagina. all the way below the perineum. This can really be appreciated on the sagittal. Uh, typically, this disorder is related to an imperforate hymen, which you can see obstructing the flow inferiorly of these retained menstrual products. So again, beautifully demonstrated on the sagittal. And so, that is a case of hematometrial colpos presenting acutely due to an imperfect hymen. Our last case for this session is a uracal duct with cyst formation. Here is the uracal cyst at the umbilicus, a common location. It is thick-walled and inflamed, and as you can see, extends to the intraperitoneal aspect. We will watch that duct extend down to the bladder dome here on the cine. So there's the umbilical fluid collection and now a tract extending right to the bladder dome. This is better shown on the sagittal where you can see again that umbilical fluid collection and the intraperitoneal tract extending to the bladder dome where you can see slight thickening of the superior bladder wall as well. There can be associated malignancies with these. That was not the case with this patient, although he did present with acute superinfection of this uracal duct and cyst. And so, a uracal duct and cyst presenting with superinfection. And that concludes session three of Pediatric Emergencies. Thanks for watching.